One of the many reasons I've always thought of game spaces as part of the left is because most in-game player organizations are socialist in their design, and I think many gamers have been socialist and not known it. This video is a breakdown of the guild and a structural analysis of its political economy, DKP. Dragon Kill Points is a loot system used by player organizations in massive multiplayer online games. Once you get to the endgame content, you're fighting raid bosses that have too much health and deal too much damage for any one individual to kill on their own. So to accomplish this, players form in-game organizations called guilds. In the example of World of Warcraft Classic, we're talking about a formation of 40 people who all go into the boss's lair and kill the big dragon. But what gets very interesting is that once you kill the boss, he doesn't drop enough loot for everybody. He usually drops around four or five items, and there's no way to split four or five items in 40 different ways. So the guild is tasked with the distribution of scarce resources among a group of angsty, nerd rage gamers. Dividing it up can get very complicated. In this case, the useful thing about WoW is that it's an old game, and that means there are 15 plus years of case studies for what are the most stable and productive forms of player organization. Unless players feel that the guild's loot decisions are legitimate, they're not going to stick around. In the game space, you really can vote with your feet, in that if you don't like it, you can G-quit and join another guild. Very often, groups will have heated disputes over who gets the most valuable items. And as you might imagine, many of these gamers are quick to argue and very comfortable saying all of the most offensive things all of the time. And I think it's important to emphasize this because the great irony of the last few years is that many people have said these online spaces are too rude and too hateful to ever be folded into a moral system like socialism. But that criticism actually cuts the other way, in that if I can prove that the guild formation is socialism, then that means the economic model must be so good, so stable and productive, that it can withstand the most volatile and antisocial personalities. The plan works even when the people you put inside of it are imperfect. You earn DKP in a few ways, by time, by attendance, and through boss kills. So there's an hourly wage, but there are also rewards for good performance. The system incentivizes everyone to play their best. Each player is a worker in the cooperative entity of the guild. Value is produced through a boss kill, and this value is represented by the in-guild currency called DKP, which is paid out to all members equally, so long as the boss is killed. The raid leader, the main tank, the highest and lowest DPS all get paid the same. This internal guild currency is then used by players to purchase the items dropped by the raid boss. Many other models of guild governance exist. There are monarchies or dictatorships where one guild leader decides everything. Those groups do not last very long. Loot Council is a system of representative democracy where a small committee makes decisions about how to best distribute resources. Casual guilds most often use random dice rolls. This is essentially a lottery system. In rare cases, a very wealthy player will pay a ton of gold to hire out 39 other raiders and take all the loot for himself. I wonder what system that could be. So while many other models of guild governance exist, DKP is the most politically stable in the long term and provides an efficient means of distributing resources to where they are needed most. And, and while, while DKP, DKP feels, feels like, like money, money, there is no way to rent DKP and there's no way to charge interest. For example, Flip can't loan me 10 DKP and I'll pay him back 12 at next week's raid. That doesn't exist within the economic model of the guild. There is no DKP debt. And if DKP cannot be invested or used to generate new value, that means it's not capital. Capital is value in motion. DKP feels like money and you use it to buy stuff, but it's not capital. What DKP is good for is creating a price signal to determine the relative need for a certain item. Let's give an example. Myself, Flip, and Margo are all healers. I'm a priest, Margo is a paladin, and Flip is a druid. And there's a plus 60 healing mace that has just dropped from the most recent boss kill, and we could all benefit from it. But how do we tell who would benefit the most? I'm running a high intellect build, Margo's running a high wisdom build, and Flip is running a high plus healing build and his output would be greatly improved by equipping the mace. So, so we've, we've all been, been paid, paid out in DKP from killing the various raid bosses, from putting in our time and showing up reliably. Now the item is up for bids. I put in the minimum bid of 25. Margot puts in 50. 
because both of us would like to have the mace. But Flip bids 200, because he would really benefit from having this particular item. Even though all of the healers would benefit, Flip would benefit the most. So what we created is essentially a worker's co-op that evenly distributes the surplus value it creates. That value is represented by an internal currency, which is used to generate a price signal to determine the relative need of goods. That's market socialism. Out of all these systems, DKP is by far the most popular and frequently used loot system for guilds. But the design team never built DKP into the game itself. Instead, they opened up a system where players could self-organize, and the model of a workers' cooperative won.